Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I feel like I haven't filmed a video in a really long time. Um, and that's because it has been a while. Um, it is the new year. It is 2019. Um, I'm super excited. I've been kind of MIA just because of like the holidays and all that and I got engaged recently. So I've been in like full planning mode and we went and visited family for Christmas and all that good stuff. So today I wanted to sit down and film a video all about wedding planning. So I just thought I would kind of give my tips on what I've learned so far. I've only been planning my wedding for about two months, uh, almost two months next week. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm still like a newbie. I haven't gotten to the part where like everything goes wrong and you don't know what to do, but I'm in the early stages of planning and I feel like I've learned a lot already. So I thought I'd just sit down and talk about like my five top like tips and things I've learned and things to help you, especially if you're trying to stay on budget and maybe not like a super strict budget, but you're just trying to lower your cost, um, of your wedding and just, yeah, things that might help you. So let's just get started. Okay, so the first tip that I've learned is to, like the first thing you should do is find out what your budget is. So like before you like go on Pinterest or like go on the internet and try to find a venue or like look at prices of anything, like sit down and find out what your budget is. I know you're probably thinking like, duh, like everybody knows that, but I feel like some people get overly excited and they go and look at venues and they find out that they're like way over budget and they're like get their heart broken and all this stuff. So definitely sit down with your fiance, figure out what your budget is, figure out who's contributing. Um, maybe your parents or his parents or you guys are paying for yourself or it's kind of a mixture of everybody, but kind of sit down and figure out who's paying for what and like how much money you have to spend on each thing. It's the most important piece and honestly it'll help you so much when you're like looking at things because immediately you'll look at a venue and be like, no, that's so over budget, it's crazy. Or you'll look at a dress and be like, wow, that is way too much money, I can't spend that much money. So it just really helps you like come down to earth <laughs> and figure out how much money you're gonna spend because I'll be honest, weddings are expensive. And it will, your budget might change a couple times. Like in the beginning, when we first got engaged, we thought we were gonna have a wedding for less than $10,000. And that has changed <laughs> as things have progressed as we were planning. Um, so just try to make a rough budget and at least come up with, okay, I'd like to spend $10,000, but I'm willing to pay 15,000, something like that. Like come up with like a hard stop, like, okay, we really can't go over 15 or, you know, something like that. Just kind of get an idea in your head on how much money you have to spend. The second thing on my list is your venue. So I have a couple things to talk about your venue. I feel like your venue is the most important piece of your wedding. It just, it kind of like sets the tone for everything. It's also probably going to be your biggest expense. So I feel like your venue should be the first thing you start planning after you've decided your budget. But also take your time. I, when we first got engaged, we thought like, okay, we have to book a venue in two weeks. Like we've got to get on this. And we were like so stressed because we like hadn't found a venue and like nothing was working. And it was just like either too expensive or just like not what we wanted. And I'm so glad that we took the time. Like we just booked a venue um, a couple days ago. And like I said, we've been engaged for almost two months. So it did take us a little bit longer to find a venue, but I'm so glad we waited because it is absolutely perfect. We are obsessed with this venue. It's gonna be beautiful. It was such a great deal and it just is perfect for us. So definitely take your time, pick something that is like just gonna be perfect for you and your fiance. Like for my fiance and I, we really wanted um, like a, almost like a weekend getaway sort of thing. Like we wanted a place where we could spend the weekend with our friends and family and you know, just do other activities. It wasn't just gonna be like a one night party kind of a thing. This venue we found is perfect. They have little cabins on site that um, our families can stay at and it's just super perfect. 
Um, another thing about our venue and something that you should look into is we found a venue that is all inclusive, which for me is amazing. I am the type of person that like, I get really overwhelmed with too many decisions to be made. I have already freaked out a couple times <laughs> trying to think of like, oh my gosh, we have to do this and this and this. And it gets really overwhelming um, when you have so many options. So we found a venue that does um, everything all inclusive. So the cater is included, all our florals are included. Um, a bride's cake and a groom's cake is included. Um, I don't know what else is included. It's like everything in there. The only thing we have to pay additional for is a photographer and alcohol. Um, so it's pretty much everything included. And not only is it just included, like I get choices of vendors. So they gave me a list and said like, okay, here's your two or three floral design people. You can choose one of these, whatever fits your style better, you know, whatever, pick one and that's, you can use that as your floral. Same with the DJ. They gave us like two or three op options for a DJ and we get to choose which one we like better. So, and then the best part is I don't even have to worry about paying these vendors. I literally just pay the venue one lump sum and the venue deals with paying the vendors. So try and find something like that if you're like me and you just get overwhelmed with like too many decisions. Um, try and find an option like that. And to me, it seems so less stressful to only pay one person and then have them deal with paying all of the other people. It just oh, it takes so much pressure off of me. So take your time, pick the perfect venue, try and find something like what we found. It'll be a lifesaver. Um, tip number three is try to utilize your friends and family for things. So this is something that like you probably feel awkward like asking people to do, but I promise you your friends and family like really want to help out any way that they can. So think about like if you have any friends or family that um, like have some sort of talent, <laughs> I should say, uh, like if you have a friend or family who's a photographer, like see if they'll do you some photos for you or if they'll shoot your wedding for you. Um, if you have someone in your family who's just really crafty or somebody who can make signs and stuff, maybe they can do your invitations or just like utilize your friends and family as much as you can. And that will really like alleviate a lot of costs. So for us, we um, asked my stepfather to play uh, the acoustic guitar like as I am walking down the aisle or like as our bridal party is walking down the aisle. And um, I'm really excited about it because it just means so much more that it's my stepdad up there playing and instead of like some stranger. So I'm really excited about that. And we, we also had a friend um, who's a photographer reach out to us and offer to do our engagement photos for free. So we were really lucky. Um, I also happen to have like the craftiest mother and mother-in-law in the world. So they have offered to do like so many decorations and any extra decor that we need. They want to do it themselves. And so just try to think of people that maybe you can utilize, even if it's just people like to help you set up on the day or um, just to help you get organized, something like that. Just don't feel bad about reaching out to your friends and family. I promise you they want to help you. Even if they can't help you like financially, maybe they can help you by like chipping in, like working on something. So just think about it. Tip number four. Um, this is something that really helped me in the beginning when I was freaking out and I like didn't know where to start. And I'm, I was like, oh my gosh, I've never planned a wedding. I've never even planned like a party before. Like how am I going to start planning a wedding? get you one of these. This is like a lifesaver. So um, this one is the Not Ultimate Wedding Planner and Organizer. Um, I know you can get this on Amazon and they have a ton of other different versions. I like this one obviously because I have it, um, but, and this is the only one I've ever had, so I don't really know how they compare, but I know that there's other options out there. Um, but you can order this on Amazon and it has been such a lifesaver. Like it is just a big giant binder filled with like all these different tips. Like it starts off with like color inspiration and you can fill out like how you want your design of your wedding. And then it has a little like timeline here, which has really helped me. Um, like if you have a year long engagement, this is your timeline. So 
you know, nine to 11 months before you need to reserve your date. Um, you need to choose your bridal party, start shopping for wedding dresses, finalize your guest list, things like that. So it just helps you stay organized. And cause I really had no idea like what order I needed to get everything done in. Honestly, like I knew the things that had to be done, even though there are some things in here that like I never would have thought of, but, um, it really helps you just decide like, okay, I need to do this and then I'll work on this. And then it helps you just like set up a timeline and just get organized on when you need to be booking certain things. So this has just been extremely helpful and they have so many different tabs like for your guest list. They have a whole page here. You can do your guest list and like write everybody out. You can do venue stuff. There's stuff in here about your dress photography, flowers, uh, ceremony and bridal party. Um, and then it, even at the front, it has um, like a bunch of, like a bunch of pages for contact sheets. So you can fill out, like when you do book things, like I booked our venue. So I put it here, I put their contact information just in case of like, I quickly need to find it. Um, same with our like DJ, we have that booked too. It just like really helps you stay organized and keep everything together. Um, plus it's fun. Like you get, there's like places for you to like print out pictures and paste them on here just to like for inspiration and things like that. And it's just been like really fun for me. I don't know if like that makes me a loser or something, but I like being organized, especially when it comes to something like this. So get one of these. You won't regret it. <laughs> Okay, and so then my last tip, especially this is for the bride and groom if you're trying to cut down your budget. The number one way to cut down your budget, I believe, is to cut down your guest list. And I know that's hard. A lot of people um, like have a lot of friends and family that they wanna invite and it's such a special occasion. Like you wanna have a lot of people and your family members might start saying, oh, you have to include this person and you've gotta invite this person. and that is the number one way that your budget will just like start increasing. The more people you have, the more space you need. So you need a bigger venue, which usually means more dollar signs. Um, also more people equals more food, which also equals more dollar signs and more people equals more alcohol, which obviously equals more do dollar signs. So that is the number one way to cut down your cost just if you're looking for like a really big cut, I, I think that's like been the main reason that we are able to stay on budget is because we are inviting less than a hundred people. Like we are only sending out, I think it's like 50 invitations for like a total of like 78, excuse me, for a total of 78 guests. So that's like a, the number one way we've been able to cut down our budget. So that way we can find a smaller venue. We can, we don't even have to pay for a hundred people for food or alcohol. It's just, it's seriously been a lot easier. I think, um, don't get me wrong. It will be hard telling people, no, I can't invite that person or no, sorry. And you'll feel a little awkward at first, but just, you know, try and stay strong and I promise you it'll be the number one way to cut down your budget. Even like for like invitations. I don't, I only have to spend like $200 on invitations because I'm not even sending, I'm not even buying a hundred invitations. So it's just everything gets significantly cheaper the like smaller your guest list is. So I know it's hard. It'll probably be the hardest thing out of this list that you have to do, but it will pay off. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That is like all of my tips that I have learned so far while planning my wedding. I think I'm gonna do a couple other wedding related videos. I might do like some more like this as we've gone down the line and um, figured out some more tips and tricks and whatever. Um, I think I'm also gonna do like a bridal makeup look um, cause I am going to be doing my own makeup on the big day. Um, and yeah, maybe even like some wedding dress stuff. I don't know. So I will probably be posting some more wedding related videos. So give this one a thumbs up if you guys liked it and uh, keep an eye out for some other ones. Thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.